live from YMSL Studios. Welcome to the Douglas Report Week One Reviews. I'm your host Bobby Maradia with uh, our usual panel over here with NRJ, and I'd like to welcome our full-time panel uh, newest member, Michael Sabon Solomon. Uh, Michael, we just came to terms with uh, your agent and uh, Edward Rishti, and uh, <laughs> we're happy to have you on board here for the 2012 season. I want to thank you for the uh, great contract offer. Happy to be part of the team. Uh, looking forward to bringing some new perspectives and some humor and some activity to this uh, panel, and uh, it's going to be a great evening. Yeah, well, as they say, it's better late than never, and uh, opening day we finally came upon after a month of holidays and, uh, and uh, Mother Nature, and uh, guys, what kind of action we had on the field this Sunday, and uh, we're going to review uh, all the games, and uh, it, there were so many sideline stories, and it's only <laughs> week one, and uh, we're going to start with uh, Michael's game, the feature game at Memorial One. And uh, Michael, um, this year, coming into the year, I know you were excited about your team. Uh, you, you took a little different uh, perspective uh, at draft day, picking up the uh, alley and going a different route. Uh, you went into week one and uh, you played against the uh, aging uh, wonders of Dallas too. <laughs> yeah, I certainly did. Um, the, uh, the Gatorade chest was out, stocked with Ben Gay. Tiger Bomb and, of course, RBI Inc.'s favorite beverages for the uh, Dallas 2 squad. Uh, I want to first off start by saying um, that uh, I want to send, I guess, a shout out to one of the players on their team. It was uh, Charles Hadded. Just the first inning of the first game, I believe it was Max hit a line drive and the kid made a spectacular diving catch and really hurt himself and I felt very bad I mean it was you know his first game first inning first yeah. everything he made a great play highly touted prospect like this and then he has to get basically almost carried off the field um, so you know I just I'm wishing him well uh, I hope he's okay and uh, we really look forward to having you in the league so get better and get back into the game next week Actually, we uh, actually got initial reports uh, from his uh, training uh, staff today, and it, apparently he's going to be missed two weeks. So oh. hopefully it's not a season-ending injury, but it did look uh, bad, and he came hobbling. And uh, so that was a, another. Uh, and besides, besides for him himself and his health, that's a very big uh, letdown for his team. We got to see how they could survive. He was third or fourth round pick slotted in there. Yeah, and no, actually so, second round pick. Second yeah, round pick. Yeah, he was, uh, you could tell he's going to be an outstanding player. Um, and then, you know, the, the game started off for uh, Dallas. Uh, Jack had it, was, uh, was running late. He wasn't really coming until the second game. Then the sun got hurt. They had a, an outfield of uh, Nathan Tal in center and uh, Sammy Sutton in right and David Richie in left to, to start the game, which was, uh, you know, was not going to help the cause that much. So, uh, you guys took advantage of that. Yeah, we uh, we definitely did. I mean, we got really uh, hot really fast. Um, we prepared ourselves in the off season. I mean, the, the few practices that we all had, we knew we were going to face red and you know a little bit of a um, little bit of a weaker pitching situation, especially for that team. And you know, our I think we went through the whole lineup the first inning. Um, I think we only scored three or four runs, but we were hitting them hard. Every shot in the yeah. gaps, line drives, every guy. So, you know, we got off to a good start, and uh, we capitalized. Yeah, Red, uh, to me, it looked like he had nothing left in the tank. I mean, I watched a couple of innings. It was barely reaching the plate. I, I, he claims that after the kid got injured, he sort of lost, uh, lost it a little bit. And uh, But they hung in there. They, they battled back a little bit. They made a game out of it. And... Uh, you know, they eventually ended up uh, winning 13-6. Uh, to six. We, uh, won, uh, yeah, we won. Yeah, we won. yeah you won yeah. game one, 13-6. Yep. Uh, but now a different story for game two. Jack had it came. He was actually uh, came in the third in the fourth inning, and he was stretching till the seventh inning. And then uh, <laughs> and then he came in, and, uh, and game two is a different story. He actually started in center field for the first time since... 1981. Uh, I mean, since his 80s when he played, and um, and uh, you know they had the the regular team back. And actually, the big story of the day, and 
Michael, we, we got to elaborate on this, is, uh, is the star, hitting star, or, or even player of the week candidate was Stefan Bitesh. Wow. I mean, uh, and let's not forget what organization he came from. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, he was part of the Save on Sanity farm team of, uh, you know, over 50 bold men that we have in Georgia somewhere, but an undisclosed location. But yeah, I mean, the guy came in and he, uh, he, he took the trade like a man and he prepared himself and the guy hit phenomenal. I think, you know, four or five solid shots, nothing cheap, maybe better than that. And uh, they even gave him a shot at third. And the guy, you know, I don't think he made that many plays, but I remember the one he did was off of my bat. I hit a rocket, and I mean, you know, I don't even know how he came up with that ball, but uh, he made the play, and uh, he was good. Yeah, actually, uh, to clarify his stats for the day, it was six for seven, two doubles, a triple, three RBIs, and wow. uh, and he played stellar defense. Look, uh, you know, I don't know if they're going to be counting on that on a weekly basis at third base. Right. But uh, he was certainly a good find. Jack Haddon played center field. He made a couple of great plays coming in, uh, showed his speed. He was the threat on the bases. He was three for four in game two. And uh, Nathan had a big day, four for eight, home run, three RBIs. And um, and then the uh, Dallas ran away with game two, 10 to two. And, yeah, uh, they, uh, they definitely did. I mean, we were in the game. It was a 3-1 game. We had a situation that we botched. It could have been me getting up in a bases loaded one out situation uh, but instead we ended up um, two outs first and second and uh, I flew out but after that point the floodgates open we made a lot of errors I mean I'm not pointing fingers it's week one we missed a few weeks you know that plays a mental toll on people it's week one I am very happy with the team but they did run away with the second game and uh, We'll be back. All right, now let's talk about our former colleague uh, on your uh, on your squad, Douglas Dweck. I mean, what exactly uh, is his role uh, in the organization <laughs> right now? Well, his role in the organization is really just to sit there. And uh, <laughs> if he's called upon to play a position, then great. He is definitely going to be hitting full-time. Uh, the guy definitely ha brings a great back to the team. He's a veteran. Uh, if you need a hit to the right side with a man in scoring position, he'll get it done. Um, but he uh, is well, there truth to the rumor that Douglas actually got playing time at second base? There is absolutely truth to that. I felt that I owed it to him as a veteran and one of the guys that um, you know deserved to be in the field. Uh, and I did. I switched him with Buabe for game two. But I will say that I did pick him as a pitcher, and I. You know, if these other guys, the younger guys, pan out to be better fielders than I have to do, and I think Douglas would agree that if we do what's right for the team, he'll be fine with that. But uh, he's guaranteed going to get full-time hitting and possibly even a, uh, a closing uh, pitching job <laughs> if we're up 36 to 1 at some point. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> it sounds like he's a little bit of trade bait, to tell you the truth, because no, he's you a know what? good hitter. He has no position on your team unless you bench yourself. No, not happening. Um, he's definitely uh, not on the trading block. Uh, I did not offer him out there, and I received no inquiries about his services. Okay. Well, that part's not a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Douglas could always hit. I'm sure he'll uh, definitely uh, put up the numbers offensively. I, I do want to say that uh, um, Eddie Hakim had an unbelievable Yes, he did. Day. He did, by the way. Uh, Eddie Hakim, five for seven, three, uh, three runs scored. When did he play in the field? He Eddie played Hakim. short center. Uh, again, a little rusty. Made most of the plays. Had a few errors, but nothing crazy. Nothing that gave up anything. But his hits were very solid shots every swing. Solid shots to left center, solid to right, up the middle, nothing cheap. So I was happy to see right, that. Yeah. Well, he could always hit. And, uh... Well, this team is going to hit no matter what. Any way he slices, this team is way too good not to hit over the course of a season. The question is going to be the field, namely the infield, really. Yeah. Well, I, I am changing up some things this week. Uh, you know, this was a work in progress, a, a little science experiment I had.
But, uh, you know, of course, uh, it's not set in stone, but I am going to move some guys around in the infield, and we'll see. I do want to give another shout-out to Ali Marshall, former MVP, future Hall of Famer, first pick. He got engaged this uh, past yes. weekend. Oh, nice. He um, did. Mabruk, and uh, I'd also like everyone to know that he was in the Tesh five times during the game. <laughs> Luckily, there was a Porter John at the field. I, I think they're going to actually refund you for bringing that there because he overflowed it. It was shit all over the field. And uh, luckily someone brought a 16-rolled thing of toilet paper from Costco. Otherwise, it would have been a disaster. Well, I'm uh, glad you brought that information to us. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, I guess nerves. He's for the big day. Yeah, right? yeah. He yeah. claims he was at a pignon. He was probably really at the mix. <laughs> but uh, he said he had a couple drinks with the new fiance, and uh, you know he's probably a little nervous to you know tie the knot and give up the baseball career. And you know you you probably see him next year going the second round, be about right, right. twenty five pounds heavier, <laughs> yeah, sure. little bold, you know, <laughs> DHing, <laughs> playing first. I'll be at shortstop. <laughs> And your old buddy uh, David Dash Asher uh, got a little action in first base. He had a few hits. Yeah, played, uh, Asher. Played, uh, <laughs> Asher was good. Might have found uh, his job once again. Yeah, in, yeah. In first he was base. Uh, definitely smothering some balls, just like he does at the gay club. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but he was good. Uh, Asher's definitely a veteran yeah. of, the, of the. Actually, he's the youth one, of that one, team. One, actually, one, actually. <laughs> he's the young prospect. Yeah, he doesn't even know what Dallas the TV show is. I mean, he only knows of the new. <laughs> so uh, anyway, yeah, I guess you got to be uh, somewhat happy with coming out with a split in, uh, in week one. Yeah. I mean, uh, ironically, last year same thing. After week one, you just came out with a split. And yeah. Everything went downhill after that. Yeah, so hopefully, right. uh, things change uh, for the rest of the year. Uh, now uh, let's announce a number here. Uh, we're opening up our phone line seven three two five Y M S L five five. Once again, seven three two five. YMSL55 or 732-596-7555. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. And uh, now we're going to get to the next game, which um, next matchup was a Memorial 3. And uh, this was, I don't know how to describe this uh, classic uh, <laughs> classic scenario. Uh, what a game, what a game, what a was, game. Uh, oh Joe Cheer as the unknowns. Versus Project X, uh, captained by Maurice Haber, and uh, you know, it, 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 first of all, there's, there's a storyline behind this whole uh, situation. Uh, about 10:04 a.m. that day, uh, <laughs> the unknown's trainer told Joe Chira that uh, uh, Ike Schrem failed the physical and he couldn't play this year, so he looked all over the waiver wire. And came up with Haas Sutton, who was biking in uh, in Pier Village when he got the call. His agent tracked him down. He came straight to Memorial Three. And the staggering part about it, Haas Sutton was five for five with four runs scored, home run, double, triple, four RBIs, and he didn't have a job at ten o'clock in the morning. Sounds like a Kurt Warner type story. You know, let me tell you right, something about groceries. Yeah. Let me tell you something about Haas. There's a lot of guys in this league and, you know, few, you know, former players that love this sport, love this game, but I think Haas really loves baseball more than, yeah. you know, maybe that's because not many people love him, but, <laughs> and he has to love something, but uh, the guy happens to be the consummate hitter, yeah. and he, uh, I'm happy for him. He's a good guy. Now, yeah. Haas didn't even show up till the middle no, of the first yeah, game, actually. There, but the, uh, that they, was the did, first sub Did they let him play with those spandex shorts? Right? <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, we I got there at the top of the first, and uh, Ralph Hannon making his debut as pitcher for uh, the unknowns got rocked i mean he looked like he was nervous and well here's what happened before that even happened the second subplot was a fight on the mound between the umpire and both captains because the umpire insisted that you have to wear your hat going forward not uh -huh. hat backwards so we called the commissioner on a ruling like that you were actually circling the field at the time yeah. he said you don't you don't care what goes on <laughs> just start the game <laughs> so that was the second thing that happened now um project x my team, uh, we batted in the top of the first against Ralph Hannon making his YMSL debut. 
Game could not have started better for us or worse for them. Carlos, base hit. Next guy, base hit. Next guy, home run. Uh, every person's V, triple. Yeah, I mean, uh, there were, and there were shots almost against the, the fence. It was, like, uh, it was mayhem. We yeah. went up 6 nothing immediately. Yeah. And then Jackie Haber, the number 10 batter with two outs, hit a beautiful base hit to right field. Their right field to let it go by them. It was a home run. 8 nothing. Ends up, he missed second base. They appealed. They called it out. Inning oh. over. Yeah. So two runs off the board right, right. there. Okay. Now, Maxi Deep starts the game. He's on fire. He, he struck out Joe Chira the first two times he stepped to the plate. Really? Joe Chira is a good hitter. Yeah. This guy maybe had maybe five, six, seven strikeouts yesterday. Wow. He was pitching hard, hitting spots. The guy was on fire. But a run here, two runs there. Now they're down, you know, 6-3, 6-4. And Project X, my team at the plate, went to sleep because we were right. up by so much. And everyone felt like, I guess, the game was over. They start chipping was. away. They start chipping away, chipping away, chipping away. Before we know it, in the last inning, in the, uh, in the bottom of the six, the second to last time up, they score four runs, they go up 8-6. Suddenly we're down. In last, now our last chance up, we finally wake up, we take the lead again. We go up by two, and then they walk off with the win again. It was a wild, wild, wild finish. Yeah, it was a walk-off single. Joe Chira came around to score and a, and a base hit the center. But your team had a lot of issues. Um, a lot uh, of internal issues. issues. And uh, why don't we tell us about it? I mean, was, apparently there, there was some issues with uh, Jaime Shama uh, uh, with, uh, among some of the other players in the organization. What yeah. was going on exactly? Well, apparently Jaime made it clear to the captain or whoever, uh, you know, <laughs> to the GM and all that that he didn't want to play on our team and that he wanted to play on with the Insane organization. Now, the Insane team is extremely boring as it is with the same team as it's been the last four years. <laughs> Since we have the show, it's the same team. Jack Jamal, okay, Ike Jamal's injured, Marty's there, the same catcher, the, every, it's Morris, it's the same exact team. <laughs> yeah. Jaime has to go play with that team. Now, you're not talking about a four-year-old in DSM that if he's not on the team he wants, he throws his glove on the floor and he walks off the field. A 40-year-old. It's a 40-year-old <laughs> doing, that the same thing. doing the same thing. So, basically, he was playing short center. The umpire almost kicked him out of the game because he wouldn't move his helmet when he got out. He left it on the field. Then he was playing short center right next to the pitcher. Like you see at DSN again, yeah. that's like the main position next to the pitcher. Right. And, uh, and then... In game two, which was a complete rout, nobody had fun, you know, playing a game down 10 nothing, 12 nothing. You know, once in a while it happens, you gotta weather the storm and deal with it. He left, he went home. So He just wait, he just walked off the field in the middle of the game? I don't know if he told Maurice that he's leaving or not. I can't speculate on that, but well, as far uh, as I has it, he told, uh, you know, Maurice that uh, he'd rather go home and play with his kids at that point. So, uh, you know, that's. Uh, uh, you know, that's a story for another day, but, yeah. uh, you know, we'll discuss that later. Uh, but at the end of the day, he got what he wanted, yeah. and he got traded to Insane, we'll talk about which is that. a joke, we'll talk about that you know, and he got exactly what he wanted because he was, you know, walked off the field and didn't want to play with this team. I, uh, <laughs> yeah, but didn't didn't Maurice end up getting what he wanted in his son? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. you know what? If this is, I, I happen to blame Maurice for this because... You know what? Look, I would have loved to have Jaime, and I don't think it would have been that type of behavior on my organization. And I did inquire about getting him yesterday, but Haber was set on getting his son. Right. However, I blame Haber for this whole incident because everyone knew that Jaime wanted yeah. to play yeah. with his brother. Yeah, Whether right. you do that or not, that's fine. But Haber specifically picked him to try to make the other guys mad and make him mad and it's only going to come back to yeah. Want you. Yeah, but we're not talking about a second round pick that I he took and then you're right, right but Morris had plenty made... of opportunity to yeah. pick him. Yeah, yeah. Why well, then, you know what? Brother? Then if Morris has to have him, then he's going to have to get him earlier from now on. Otherwise, there should not be room in this league for this type of activity. Nah, it was, it was completely uncalled for. I mean, you know, listen, it happens every year. You, you were on a team a few years ago, you pulled the same stunt. He got traded off, uh, you know, from oh. Ali's team, Jaime, and he got traded oh. to, to the same thing. To yeah, Morris's I, team I for, had to uh, take a, a, uh, one of the defectors to the Brooklyn League, <laughs> Azer. It used to happen with uh, when they used to slot Ike, he had to be with Eddie Michon, yeah. or vice versa. 
It's horrible for the league. Yeah. You get picked where you get picked. Okay. You play on that team. And if, you, you know what? We're men. We're not I know. children. There should be, before the draft, a pre-draft show saying, if you don't like where you're picked and you're going to complain, there's plenty of other leagues. Oh, listen, man. listen. Maurice was instructed that, you know, uh, had he not been able to get his son, I'm sure he would have just told him to, you know. Yeah, if both captains are willing to make a trade, that's fine. That's one yeah. thing, you know. But, yeah. well, by the way... There are multiple people that defected from this league to Brooklyn that have told me confidentially, made me swear I would not say their names, that they wish they never left the league and went to Brooklyn, oh, no, by no, the way. Yeah, I mean, that's no surprise. Immediately no. after one game, the field is rocky. It's not a normal field. Uh, you know. Well, you find me any player that wants to go from the majors to the minors, and, uh, you know, <laughs> so we'll discuss that later. Uh, anyway, so that was uh, that matchup. So now your team got blown out uh, game two. It was a yeah. mercy, actually. And uh, now a lot of questions. Uh, I mean, the big question out of everybody's mind, I mean, you're saying Max should be pitch good. A lot of people were skeptical of him being a first-round pick. Um, I mean, now he gave him 29 runs in two games. Uh, I mean... Uh, yeah, uh, game one, he started off very, very good. Actually, you caught him last year. What was the difference you noticed? And yeah, game... Was like two and a half last year. Game one was just like last year. The fielding, uh, we had a lot of errors in the field. A lot. Um, and uh, in all different positions. All outfield, infield, everywhere. There were errors all over the place. What position was Maurice playing, actually? First base. Oh, he played first? Yeah, games. Maurice played first. V played second. Um, Carlos played short. Was the only, pro only guy who didn't make an error, actually. Um... You know, so we had errors all over the place. And game two was different. They got up to a 5 nothing lead off the bat in game yeah. two. And from there, we were dead. And they just rolled on top of us game two. It was like everyone just wanted to get out of there at that point. Yeah. So, and Heine uh, did. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, the changes uh, Maurice makes and, uh, you know, how it uh, goes the rest of the year. Hopefully he can get his uh, the organization back on track. Um, now... Uh, our next um, matchup is uh, we'll go to Meadowbrook, but before that, we'll go. Let's announce the number seven three two five YMSL five five or seven three two five nine six seven five five five, and uh, our phone lines are open. Um, the matchup uh, was um, at um, Meadowbrook was the Twins, captained by Jackie Towel against the uh, Sammy Towles Marlin uh, organization sure. and um, and this game game one was a classic uh, over here um, Meyer Safty actually got the start in uh, in this game because Moses Eastman uh, <laughs> came up lame and uh, we don't exactly <laughs> know what that means uh, he just called in and he said, came up lame yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he came Moses up, is now a Project Xer in that trade as well, by the way. Uh, yeah, Moses called in that he hurt his foot uh, and he wouldn't be able to uh, to play. So JT at the draft was smart enough to get a backup pitcher in Meyer Safty just in case his issues came up. And in the classic Wally Pip story, uh, he pitched two brilliant games and uh, Moses lost his job and. You know, and Meyer always could pitch, and uh, it was a. Uh, yeah, I watched uh, part of this game, and uh, I'll tell you, the Twins have a, a lot of young talent, and uh, <coughs> you know, JT is, I think, maybe the best player in the league uh, all around, and uh, they got a lot of you know young guys, and uh, the Marlins, um, Jeffrey Sack, a very good pitcher, uh, Sammy Tal, but I don't see enough offense out of that team. But uh, this was a classic game, and it went back and forth. Actually, um, the uh, Twins took a 5 nothing lead uh, into the fifth inning, and uh, a couple of big errors uh, helped uh, open up the floodgates a little bit. Uh, but a very interesting scenario in this game. Uh, the Twins, I uh, want to get your guys' take. I was flabbergasted when I heard what happened here. The Twins had a... 7-6 lead in the bottom of the six with two outs, second and third. And Richie Braha's up, and Jeffrey Sack is an on deck. And uh, to me, it's a no-brainer. Two outs? Yeah. You're up by a run. You walk Richie Braha to pitch to a slow-footed Jeffrey Sack, who's a dead bull hitter, and you know, that run on first doesn't mean anything. 
Anyway, they pitched to him, and he ripped the single to right, two runs scored. Wow. They took the lead, and uh, they won 8-7. to seven. Wow. So, uh, you know, it, it was... Um, I don't know. How do you feel, though? What would you have done in that uh, situation? 100% I would have walked them. Not any slight to Jeffrey, but first of all, you load the bases. Even Jeffrey said they should have walked yeah. the pitch time. <laughs> because e- even if it's an equal hitter, yeah. let's say, you load the bases on a hard ground at a third, the guy bobbles, he could recover and touch their base. Who, who was the pitcher? Meyer. Meyer Safty. If uh, he was that hot, I mean, I'm never one to say let's walk the bases loaded. But if you have a hot pitcher who's getting out, then it's okay. But if you got a weaker pitcher that's walking guys, why would you put yourself in a position to have to throw strikes to give a guy a perfect opportunity? I know, but when you have a slow runner and you can get a force at any base, that I don't know. It, worst comes to worst, if you walk the guy, it's the game's still tied. I, you know, there's a lot of ways to look at it, but it's very hard when the when you know just to have that. Uh, a grounder, the guy bobbles it, you know, he loses it. Whatever. Anyway. Is there a conference at the Mets yeah, to discuss yeah. this? And they went decided let's pitch. Yeah, ultimately, the call was JT's, and right. uh, he, you know, he didn't want to do it. Meyer, he claims that Meyer was uh, didn't want to pitch with the bases loaded, uh, so he was scared to walk the guy. And Meyer says that's not the truth. You yeah, know, you see, not. most guys don't have the confidence to get out of that gym. That's the difference. Yeah. If you have an old veteran like Ike Yadid or yeah, you know they don't care about that. But a guy first time pitching, I don't think you should let him walk the right. bases low enough. All right, I see both sides. I would have walked him. Yeah. But I understand. Yeah, I understand you know, what you're Richard saying. Richard Rock, classic uh, hitter. Uh, so the next game was. Uh, um, a blowout. The Twins got all over um, Jeffrey Sack, and they pounded him for a thirteen-one victory. Um, you'll see some of the key uh, stats that uh, the turn. Oh, your buddy uh, Jimmy Malak had a huge day the other day. Yeah, five for five with three walks. Wow. Uh, six runs scored. Five for five with two, three walks. Two wow. He said he hasn't played that good since he was on the Hamas uh, league. And his, uh, <laughs> He was right. And they were hitting grenades back and forth <laughs> to each other. And he actually played pretty good third base, which was a big question, uh, Mark. Uh, JT, four for seven, two doubles. Sonny Natkin making his debut, four for eight, three runs scored. And uh, so uh, even Abraham Haber, who was traded after the game, was three for five with five RBIs. And uh, so the Twins are in a split. They should have got a sweep, actually. But, uh, you know, we failed to mention on uh, Huge Day... Uh, for the unknowns for Jordy Vermel. Uh, Huge. Five for eight with eight RBIs. Wow. Uh, and and it, even his outs were very, very deep. Yeah. Very deep. This team could hit, by the way. This unknown, uh, the Richter guy. Yeah, how was uh, Very good. He's a good hitter. Um, even their pitcher hits. They all hit. That well, lineup is a tough good hitter. lineup. Ralph Hannon's a very yeah. good hitter. Um, it's uh, the and Joe Chira. Uh, Murray Zolta has yeah. uh, some big numbers. Well, that whole team, they have a very, very long young, lineup. Very young, young uh, athletes and very uh, very talented. And that, that team could go a long, a long way because yeah. they seem to be uh, cohesive. And uh, now with Haas to the mix. <laughs> you figure a guy like Haas would have been taken in by Dallas too, you know, fitting in with that, uh, the older crowd. But I guess... Uh, you know, I guess they needed to average out the, yeah. the scene. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, that that was uh, that was it for that matchup. The next um, the next uh, final matchup was a Memorial Two, which we had um, uh, A. B. Saka making his debut as a captain uh, with uh, Fountain of Youth yeah. versus Mabadif. Also, Mo Casson making his uh, his debut. And, uh, you know, A.B. Sacker, A.B. Sacker versus uh, Mikey Schall. Yeah, you know, on paper, this looked like a, a blowout. Um, a lot of young guys on, uh, on both teams. And uh, in the first game, Fountain Youth was all over uh, Malbatif, uh, 9 nothing, And uh, it really was, uh, it was uh, no, uh, no action over there, actually. Even the umpire left after game one. <laughs> I heard young rookie Jacob Jamal had a mighty fine day at the plate for Fountain of Youth, by the way. A double in its first yes, AP. Yes, he did. Yeah. He did at the gap. In the Barreling into time. second base, yeah. <laughs> uh, there was a, actually a... Uh, we were getting a text in from Twitter from Joe Chira. He wanted a, uh, to make mention of a new player, of one of the late-minute late subs, Benjamin Mann. Yeah. He was actually um, playing against us on Dallas too. Young guy, big burly 
guy. Um, <laughs> he was pretty decent. I mean, I think they put him at third base. He may have gotten a couple hits. You know, yeah, he he'll, uh, he'll do. Yeah, actually one of the brighter guys in the league attends uh, Cornell uh, University. So, uh, uh, you know, it's always, and he's a young guy, always uh, brings down the average age uh, organization. Yeah. Um, and uh, he, uh, yeah, he was a big guy, 6'2", he's a bit of power, uh, power hitting. By the way, Irving Batesh also once mentioned, Irv the Perv wants everyone to know that he is going for the gold glove at second base. He wants to be taken wow. seriously this year. And he actually made a diving stop uh, and threw out a very speedy runner uh, in this game as well. So really? just hitters beware. Had Irving Moses Perv get the down the line so far. <laughs> <laughs> Irving Batesh, who had the distinction actually of uh, surpassing you with one of the lowest career averages in the history of the league. By the way, for 21. My average first. last year was bad, but it wasn't in the lower, lower tier of the whole league. So Irving Batesh uh, actually went in 0 for one year uh, with the uh, infamous uh, eligible bachelorettes. Yeah, he didn't have a hit all year. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. So uh, let's hope he gets that gold glove, you know. <laughs> but he's actually improved every year uh, he's been in the league, so, uh, you know, that's a, that's a good sign. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I, that was the final matchup. So really, uh, your everybody would have been one and one except uh, your team now is, uh, um, you know, 0 and 2, and uh, a lot of question marks uh, need to be resolved. But. But did we announce the trade, or we didn't even announce the? Uh, you didn't get into the, the details of the trade. All right. So um, after the games ended, um, okay. Yeah, Jaime Shama traded. Okay. All right. Um, right now uh, we got a word from our sponsors. Uh, we got to go NASCO, Tile and Stone, and uh, we'll be right back. <laughs> 